Okay, you can see that I've cut the center divider and now we can reach in and get that back door. And you can see that it's no better than the uh, front door. So uh, we're just going to throw these away. We will pull out this center piece here. And I'm just going to do that with a large pair of pliers. Okay, and we have now completed all of the cuts that we need and we're ready to install the uh, new doors. Uh, now is a good time to pull out your shop vac and clean up a little bit. Uh, otherwise you will be spraying uh, <coughs> uh, plastic shards out of the vents. So uh, clean up is a good idea. And if you look over to the side here, you can see the uh, AC evaporator core. Uh, you can also wash that down. It does have a drain on the bottom of it for condensation. So um, if you want to clean that out, any mold or mildew, uh, that's also something you can do while we have the box open. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and clean up and we'll come back and do the actual installation. Okay, before we install the actual components, I want to show you a little bit about what we're going to do uh, from outside the car. <clears throat> this is the uh, heater treater kit, and we have the two doors, we have a spacer that goes in between, and we have an axle that will slide through there, and set screws that will tighten that to both sides. You'll notice that we now have a steel spring pin that is the limit pin, and that will move between the two stop points in the box. Note that the uh, force of the system <clears throat> is on this limit pin, <clears throat> not on the... Uh, connection with the uh, set screws. So while the set screws are fairly solid, um, they're not solid enough to withstand the full force of the system, but they don't have to because uh, that's done with the limit pin. All the set screws are doing is holding the uh, doors to the axle, not withstanding force. Now one of the tricks that we suggest is to <clears throat> set that set screw, the back one, to the point where the axle just slides in, put that in place, and now we can put the door in and make just this much movement to tighten it down. Uh, that is a little difficult to get to, so if you kind of preload it this way, <clears throat> it's very easy to tighten it down. So we'll leave it loosened to this extent, put it in place with the uh, Allen wrench connected to the set screw, and then when we're ready to tighten it, we just push that. Okay, as you can see, I've put the two doors in place with the uh, Allen wrench uh, extended into the uh, set screw and started to thread the uh, axle through. And that will thread through. We want to make sure we keep the limit pin between these two stop points and push it all the way into that okay and then we want to turn that axle all the way clockwise against the stop point okay and that's the uh, bottom position of the door and I'll now uh, tighten the set screws in place and you can see that back one's going to be fairly easy because we already have the Allen wrench in place the front one you'll be able to see pretty quickly so let me do that and get back to you. Okay, I got the set screws in place and tightened down. And you can now see that when we turn the axle, we have control over both of the doors. And we'll control the temperature on both sides. And since we turn this all the way to the right, we aligned it to where the stop points are correct. That will give you exactly correct operation. Uh, I'm going to show you a little more about the motor, then we'll get back to the box. Okay, this is the actuator motor. Before we put it back in, I want to show you a couple of things. We provide you with a copper spacer that will fit around the outside of this. Note that this is a plastic connector, and adding this little sleeve just adds a little more structural integrity. It's not really required. It's just sort of a precaution. The other thing we provide is a snap connector for a 9-volt battery. And you can just touch the wires to the leads and verify that that motor is working correctly. I don't know if you can see it moving, but I can certainly feel it. And that motor will turn. You can verify that it's correct. You can also use this to uh, 
turn the alignment of the uh, connection to fit onto the axle. It really doesn't matter the door, what the door position is when you put the motor in place as long as it's between the two limit points and the motor is uh, connected in place securely. So you can use the uh, battery to turn the connector a little and align it. So I'm going to go ahead and install the motor. We'll be back in a second. I've reinstalled the motor and again the position of the door doesn't really matter uh, with respect to the motor as long as it's uh, between the extents of movement. And just to uh, show you that it works, I've got the uh, system on and I'm going to turn the control knob and I can make that door go up or down now and that's going to regulate the amount of air that's blown through the heater core and will control the temperature. So. Uh, uh, we're ready to seal the box back up, and uh, I'll be back to you after we've done the sealing. I've now put the cutout piece back in place, and you'll note that I uh, put this little uh, spring clip back over it, and this is now fit over the tongue and groove on the bottom, and uh, with the, snap, the, the spring in place, it's actually fairly sturdy the way it is. A lot of cars will have a screw here in place of this uh, spring. You know, so don't, don't feel like you need a spring, but you can see that that thing is in there pretty good. Uh, I do have uh, my hot glue gun, and I'm going to just uh, tack weld, it's probably not the right term, but just tack weld the little spot there with hot glue to kind of hold it in place. That's not really necessary, just using the uh, tape is enough, but I just wanted to show you how you could do that if you want to. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and tape over that with uh, the metal tape that's provided in the kit and uh, show you what the finished product is. Here's the completed repair. You can see that we've uh, sealed the cuts with the uh, provided metal duct tape. And that's actually very good stuff. It will put a good seal on the car. And we now have metal blend doors in place. You saw them move. We will have uh, efficient AC and heat. There is more information and more pictures available on our website, and our website is heatertreater.net. Heater treater is one word, and uh, we are .net, not .com. So you can also just do a search for heater treater on the internet, and uh, you'll find a reference to our site and be able to get there. Uh, there are additional videos available. We have products for multiple makes of automobiles including Ford, Chevrolet, Dodge, uh, and other Jeeps. And this is a common industry problem. Um, but as you can see, this is a fairly simple repair, something you can do yourself, and something that will allow you to fix the uh, heat and AC in your Grand Cherokee at considerably less cost than paying the dealer, uh, which will generally run you between $900 and $1,500. And uh, this is a solid repair is actually better than what the dealer will do for you and uh, something that you can do yourself. So please feel free to uh, view our website to get more information and uh, hope that we uh, get an opportunity to do business with you. We are a professional group of engineers and will provide whatever support is necessary to make sure you are successful. We take great pride <coughs> in the fact that we are 100% successful with our repairs. And uh, if you run into problems, we will provide the support necessary to make sure it works correctly. Uh, thank you.